Hey y'all, I'm James Wright. Welcome to my shop and it's that time again for another annual glue test. Let's dive in. So if you don't know what this is, I'm basically running a 25 to 30 year long test on different types of glues. And I have seven of the most common glues that would be used for working wood. Originally, I tested 64 different glues to see which one is the strongest. And with the way this rig is designed to shear the blocks off of the substrate, I almost always get the break on the glue, not on the wood. Whereas most glue tests out there are testing it in some sort of mechanical figure, in which case the wood generally breaks first. But I wanna know what is the actual strength of the glue? And so that's what sets this test apart from a lot of other ones. In the big test, I actually tested long grain to long grain. I tested in grain to long grain. I tested gap filling as well as I tested water resistance, putting them outside and in the rain to see what would happen. But this long duration test is just long grain, to long grain. Now I'm gonna try and shorten this video up a little bit and so if you wanna see exactly how this test is done and some of the history and other things I've done, I've got a long playlist. I'll leave links to it down below as well as some of the specific videos that show the test in use. I'm just assuming that everyone knows that because I've actually been doing glue tests like this for about seven years now. Now I was a little fearful with this test this year particularly because I've got a pile of these boards with all of these glued onto them up in my garage. And that way they're all expanding and contracting at the same rate in the same distance outside outside of the air conditioning. Then I bring them down here to actually do the test and take them back up there. But this year I moved, so I wasn't quite sure, um, am I gonna be having any problems with them? Is there gonna be any changes? So uh, let's see what happens. I was actually kind of expecting to see a slight decrease in some of the strengths due to the vibration of the truck or moving them around, drossling them, being in different environments. Any different expansion and contraction will weaken them a bit. But when I ran the first test, all of the strengths increased by about two to three times. What? I was expecting to see numbers around 200 to 300 or so for a lot of these, but some of them started coming out at 800 and one of them spiked at over a thousand. What's going on? Same test rig, same scale, same everything. I mean, I even had my scale calibrated recently and all my numbers are off. I was wondering if something with the board was different. Does it, are they drier? So it's a stronger connection? Is it something else? But it's the same time of year and it should be the same moisture level because I only moved about 20 miles. I got out the owner's manual and started looking at the scale itself, seeing if there's some setting I had wrong. I inspected the cabling and the wiring and I even looked at the pins on this to make sure that something wasn't wired wrong. But then I realized, wait a second, I just used this scale on something different. I last used the scale on this project out at Jeff's shop. Yeah, stay tuned. This is coming sometime soon. And for that project, I had to take this little stubby bolt out and put in this big bolt. And so when it came back to the shop, this big bolt was here, but I was missing this little stubby bolt. And I figured, yeah, I don't need that little stubby bolt. We'll just use it without it and push on it and see what happens. And the problem with that is this piston will then push on the whole bottom surface of this rather than just on the threaded part. When I put that little stubby bolt in there, it fits into a slot so that it's just putting pressure on that stubby bolt right there. And that little bit is what the difference was because rather than pushing at this spot, it was pushing out here and this was flexing a different amount. And so the scale was off because I replaced one little bolt. And that's a quick synopsis of about 45 minutes of my life. So after figuring that out, all the numbers came back to somewhere around what I was expecting, which was Kind of pleasing, though I do like seeing very interesting results because interesting results really often mean that I have something to learn. But in this case, they were all right around the same ballpark. But let's go over to the computer and take a closer look at what happened. So welcome to my incredible spreadsheet with all of the numbers. Yay, this is so much fun. So this is the old test with the long grain to long grain. And then we come down here and we have the long grain to end grain. A little farther down we have gap filling. We have the exterior conditions and each of these then go through what is actually coming out in this. To explain a little bit, these raw data numbers, those are the numbers that actually came off the scale. Um, if there's colors on that, that's actually did it leave a little bit of wood behind. So if it's white, it left no wood behind and then here's the grade of how much wood actually broke 
as opposed to the glue breaking. The PSI is then taking it because this is actually three quarter by one inch. Uh, so it's actually changing it up to one inch by one inch of the block coming off. So that's the difference between raw data and PSI. Uh, so you can come through here and see all of the glues, tight bond, old brown, high glue, high glue, high glue, homemade high glue, tight bond originals, tight bond two, tight bond three, white glue. There's just a whole pile of different glues, 64 different glues that have gone through this whole test. And each of these, A, B, C, D, are each of the individual tests. So each one was tested 10 times. And then you have the average of them, the minimum, the maximum. The adjusted average is taking into consideration these broken wood chunks. Uh, so anytime there's the, the color in the row, I'm adding a little bit more in for the adjusted average. So take this with a grain of salt. These adjusted averages and breakage don't mean that much. And then standard deviation for you uh, spreadsheet nerds. So we can go down through all of this and you can see how all of them are, uh, as well as I have other pages down here where you can look at uh, the long grain to end grain, the long grain to long grain, and actually go through all of these with the gap filling and the exterior conditions. The exterior conditions was one that was really um, kind of surprising to see how quickly some of these fell off. And uh, yeah, type on three down here. That's what they call waterproof. It's not. Okay, I'll get off my high horse. <laughs> um, but uh, this did actually change a, a few things. Just understand, anything over about 300 on here, uh, the wood will break long before it will. My test is de designed to break the glue instead of the wood. Um, but there are a few others in here. There's the overall, actually putting them all into it. Um, overall, without the exterior, it makes the lines a little bit clearer because with the exterior, all of these numbers down here are the exterior glues. Uh, and then those who wanted to see just the high glues. And the high glues were all relatively similar. I'm very, very surprising, uh, except for the, the fish glue. The fish glue was much, much stronger. Uh, it was kind of interesting. But yeah, most of them are, are right around the same. There's there's not a huge difference in high glues in their actual strength. And the, the number down here doesn't have anything really to do with its strength. That's more to do with the viscosity or the squishiness or bounciness of the glue. But let's get back here and talk about the data because we have a whole year's worth of data. And this down here is where I do the long-term test. So this was the original test data here. And then I went six months later and one, one year and 18 months and two years. And then on down until we are three years, four years, and the most recent five years. And so if you want to go in this and look at all these numbers, that's where they're at. But the interesting part is these charts over here. So this is the year over year chart, how you can see how they've changed over time. This one down below is the adjusted average. Um, so don't, don't worry about that one too much because it's a little bit... Uh, um, yeah, it's kind of confusing. But let me zoom this out a little bit so you can see it better for this. So up on the top here, this is Elmer's Wood Glue Max, which was honestly, if I'm going for a PVA, it was incredibly strong. Amazing, amazing glue. And that's what I've switched to. If I really want a PVA, that's the one I usually grab. The next one, this orange line, is the West Systems Epoxy. And it's kind of gone up a little bit over time. I'm not sure what this dip was, but it's just like with the DAP Weldwood, I'm not sure what that rise was. So these numbers have a good bit of variance with them. Sometimes they're up, sometimes they're down, but there's a decent trend that you can start to see with them. Most of them have a slight trend down. Not enough to be worried about, but enough to know that, hey, they're, they're changing a little bit over time. The surprising ones were the Epoxy, which actually had a slight rise. I had several right off the bat, the high glues actually gained in strength and then have basically leveled off and been identical since then. Tight Bond 2 is the most common go-to PVA glue, and you can see it's here, and it's just got this slight decline to it, much like the Elmer's PVA glue, just an ever so slight decline to it over the time. The surprising one, 2P10 gel, that's a super glue, and this is what happens with super glue. Um, amazing strengths are off the bat, really, really good strength, but then just drops off instantly, and I actually had one block this time that didn't last. Here you can come over here and see, zero! Uh, I took it to the test rig and the block wasn't there. It fell off sometime during the year. I don't know where the block is, probably fell off during moving. Um, but yeah, um, I got a zero on that. But most of the other numbers are, are pitiful, 21, 45, 24, 30. Uh, that's, uh, that, yeah. So super glue is not a structural glue for a long time. It might be structural for the first few months, but if you want to have it on there longer, get something else. The other interesting one is the DAP Weldwood. That was an incredibly strong glue, way, way up here to begin with. And it was spiking like it was going through the roof. And I, so I think that there was something odd with this data, something within range, and it was on the high end of the range. But then it has precipitously dropped off 
and uh, DAP is now down way down here with uh, with Type Bond 2. Still relatively strong um, and, and far better for exterior, but uh, it's it's dropped off. So uh, nothing hugely amazing since the last time, but it's just really interesting to see how this goes. So we'll see what another year holds. <laughs> So uh, there you have it. And yes, if you can't tell, I love spreadsheets and I have a lot more data on this. And if you want to actually go and see that spreadsheet, I have a link to it in the description down below so you can go look through all the raw data. And a lot of people I've talked to in the past have pulled that out and looked through some of it. And it's actually kind of interesting to see some of the numbers and how they change in there. And I use different glues because of the test I've done. I found that there are some that are far better than others and some that say they're supposed to do something they don't. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Type Bond 3. Kind of interesting to learn. But all that being said, this is a really interesting project that I love bringing out once a year, and I'm looking forward to seeing what the results say next year, because who knows what's going to happen, and I'm looking forward to seeing that. Now, if you have any questions, thoughts, ideas, snide remarks, or things I could do better, let me know that down below. If you see some test you'd like me to do, please let me know, because anytime you like, comment, share, subscribe, it helps out the channel. Yeah, I know, I say it all the time. But honestly, um, you guys are the ones that pay for all of this. I am not sponsored by sponsors, I am sponsored by you, and between you patrons, members, you guys are the ones that make this channel happen. I like putting out this data for you. Uh, we're actually going to be doing a few new things for Patreon coming soon, so stay tuned for that. It's going to be kind of fun. But if you want to find out more about that, links down below, and you know how that works. I think that'll do it for now, and until next time, have a wonderful day. Every time I do this test, it reminds me of the Bible, um, particularly the book of Numbers. And yes, I chose this shirt on purpose.